Act One, Scene One, On a Ship at Sea, A Tempestuous Noise of Thunder and Lightning Heard. Enter a Shipmaster and a Boatswain. Boatswain! Here, Master, what cheer? Good. Speak to the mariners. Fall to it, yardly, or we run ourselves aground. Bestir, bestir. Exit. Enter mariners. Hi, my hearts. Cheerly, cheerly, my hearts. Yar, yar. Take in the topsail. Tend to the master's whistle. Blow till thou burst thy wind, if room enough. Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Ferdinand, Gonzalo, and others. Good boatswain, have a care. Where's the master? Play the men. I pray now, keep below. Where is the master, boatswain? Do you not hear him? You mar our labor. Keep your cabins. You do assist the storm. Nay, good, be patient. When the sea is, hence. What cares these rowers for the name of king? To cabin, silence, trouble us not. Good, yet remember whom thou hast aboard. None that I more love than myself. You are a counselor. If you can command these elements to silence, and work the peace of the present, we will not hand a rope more. Use your authority. If you cannot, give thanks. You have lived so long, and make yourself ready in your cabin for the mischance of the hour, if it is so hap. Cheerly, good hearts. Out of our way, I say. Exit. Hm. I have great comfort from this fellow. Methinks he hath no drowning mark upon him. His complexion is perfect gallows. Stand fast, good fate, to his hanging. Make the rope of his destiny our cable, for our own doth little advantage. If he be not born to be hanged, our case is miserable. Exeunt. Re-enter Boatswain. Down with the topmast. Yar. Lower, lower. Bring her to try with main course. A plague upon this howling. They are louder than the weather or our office. Re-enter Sebastian, Antonio, and Gonzalo. Yet again? What do you hear? Shall we give oar and drown? Have you a mind to sink? A pox on your throat, you bawling, blasphemous, incharitable dog! Work you, then. Hang, cur! Hang, you hoarse and insolent noisemaker! We are less afraid to be drowned than thou art. I'll warrant him for drowning, though the ship were no stronger than a nutshell, and as leaky as an unstanched wench. Lay her a hold, a hold! Set her two courses off to sea again. Lay her off. Enter mariners, wet. All lost! To prayers, to prayers! All lost! What? Must our mouse be cold? The king and prince at prayers. Let's assist them, for our case is as theirs. I'm out of patience. We are merely cheated of our lives by drunkards. This wide-chapped rascal, would thou might like drowning the washing of ten tides. He'll be hanged yet, though every drop of water swear against it and gape at widest to glut him. A confused noise within. Mercy on us. We split, we split. Farewell, my wife and children. Farewell, brother. We split, we split, we split. Let's all sink with the king. Let's take leave of him. Exuant Antonio and Sebastian. Now would I give a thousand furlongs of sea for an acre of barren ground, long heath, brown furs, anything. The wills above be done, but I would fain die a dry death. Exuant. Scene two. The island. Before Prospero's cell. Enter Prospero and Miranda. If by your art, my dearest father, you have put the wild waters in this roar, allay them. The sky, it seems, would pour down stinking pitch, but that the sea, mounting to the welkin's cheek, dashes the fire out. Oh, I have suffered with those that I saw suffer. A brave vessel, who had no doubt some noble creature in her, dashed all to pieces. Oh, the cry did knock against my very heart. Poor souls, they perished. Had I been any god of power, I would have sunk the sea within the earth, or ere it should the good ship so have swallowed, and the frotting souls within her. Be collected, no more amusement. Tell your piteous heart there's no harm done. Oh, woe, the day! No harm. I have done nothing but in care of thee, of thee, my dear one, thee, my daughter, who art ignorant of what thou art, not knowing of whence I am, nor that I am more better than Prospero, master of a full poor cell, and thy no greater father. More to know did never meddle with my thoughts. 
tis time i should inform thee farther lend thy hand and pluck my magic garment from me so lays down his mantle lie there my art wipe thou thine eyes have comfort the direful spectacle of the wreck which touched the very virtue of compassion in thee i have with such provision in mine art so safely ordered that there is no soul no not so much perdition as an hair betid to any creature in the vessel which thou heardst cry which thou sawest sink sit down for thou must now know farther you have often begun to tell me what i am but stopped and left me to a bootless inquisition concluding stay not yet the hours now come the very minute bids thee ope thine ear obey and be attentive canst thou remember a time before we came unto this cell i do not think thou canst for then thou wast not out three years old certainly sir i can by what by any other house or person of any thing the image tell me that hath kept with thy remembrance mm, tis far off and rather like a dream than an assurance that my remembrance warrants had i not four or five women once that tended me thou hadst and more miranda but how is it that this lives in thy mind what seest thou else in the dark backward and abysm of time if thou rememberest aught ere thou camest here how thou camest here thou mayest but that i do not twelve years since miranda twelve years since thy father was the duke of milan and a prince of power sir are not you my father thy mother was a piece of virtue and she said thou wast my daughter and thy father was duke of milan and his only heir and princess no worse issued oh the heavens what foul play had we that we came from thence or blessed wast we did both both my girl by foul play as thou sayest were we heaved thence but blessedly halp hither oh my heart bleeds to think of the teen that i have turned you to which is from my remembrance please you farther my brother and thy uncle called antonio i pray thee mark me that a brother should be so perfidious he whom next thyself of all the world i loved and to him put the manage of my state as at that time through all the signories it was the first and prospero the prime duke being so reputed in dignity and for the liberal arts without a parallel those being all my study the government i cast upon my brother and to my state grew stranger being transported and wrapped in secret studies thy false uncle dost thou attend me sir most heedfully being once perfected how to grant suits how to deny them whom to advance and whom to trash for overtopping new created the creatures that were mine i say or changed them or else new formed them having both the key of officer and office set all hearts i the state to what tune pleased his ear that now he was the ivy which had hid my princely trunk and sucked my verdure out on it thou attendest not oh good sir i do i pray thee mark me i thus neglecting worldly ends all dedicated to closeness and the bettering of my mind with that which but by being so retired or prized all popular rate in my false brother awaked an evil nature and my trust like a good parent did beget of him a falsehood in its contrary as great as my trust was which indeed had no limit a confidence sans bound he being thus lorded not only with what my revenue yielded but what my power might else exact like one who having into truth by telling of it made such a sinner of his memory to credit his own lie he did believe he was indeed the duke out of the substitution and executing the outward face of royalty with all prerogative hence his ambition growing dost thou hear your tale sir would cure deafness to have no screen between this part he played and him he played it for he needs will be absolute milan 
Me, poor man, my library was dukedom large enough. Of temporal royalties he thinks me now incapable. Confederates, so dry he was for sway, with the king of Naples, to give him annual tribute, do him homage, subject his coronet to his crown, and bend the dukedom, yet unbowed, alas, poor Millen, to most ignoble stooping. Oh, the heavens! Mark his condition and the event. Then tell me if this might be a brother. I should sin to think but nobly of my grandmother. Good wombs have borne bad sons. Now the condition. This king of Naples, being an enemy to me inveterate, hearkens my brother's suit, which was that he, in lieu of the premises, of homage and I know not how much tribute, should presently extirpate me and mine out of the dukedom, and confer fair Millen with all the honours on my brother whereon a treacherous army levied one midnight fated to the purpose did antonio open the gates of milan and in the dead of darkness the ministers for the purpose hurried thence me and thy crying self oh alack for pity i not remembering how i cried out then will cry it o'er again it is a hint that rings mine eyes to it hear a little further and then i'll bring thee to the present business which now's upon us without the which this story were most impertinent wherefore did they not that hour destroy us well demanded wench my tale provokes that question dear they durst not so dear the love my people bore me nor set a mark so bloody on the business but with colours fairer painted their foul ends in few they hurried us aboard a bark bore us some leagues to sea where they prepared a rotten carcass of a boat not rigged nor tackle sail nor mast the very rats instinctively have quit it there they hoist us to cry to the sea that roared to us to sigh to the winds whose pity sighing back again did us but loving wrong alack what trouble was i then to you oh a cherub and thou wast that did preserve me thou didst smile infused with a fortitude from heaven when i have decked the sea with drops full salt under my burthen groaned which raised in me an undergoing stomach to bear up against what should ensue how came we ashore by providence divine some food we had and some fresh water that a noble neapolitan gonzalo out of his charity who being then appointed master of this design did give us with rich garments linens stuffs and necessaries which since have steaded much so of his gentleness knowing i loved my books he furnished me from mine own library with volumes that i prize above my dukedom would i might but ever see that man now i arise resumes his mantle sit still and hear the last of our sea sorrow here in this island we arrived and here have i thy schoolmaster made thee more profit than other princesses can that have more time for vainer hours and tutors not so careful heavens thank you for it and now i pray you sir for still tis beating in my mind your reason for raising this sea-storm know thus far forth by accident most strange bountiful fortune now my dear lady hath mine enemies brought to this shore and by my prescience i find my zenith doth depend upon a most auspicious star whose influence if now i court not but omit my fortunes will ever after droop here cease more questions thou art inclined to sleep tis a good dullness and give it way i know thou canst not choose miranda sleeps come away servant come i am ready now approach my ariel come enter ariel all hail great master grave sir hail i come to answer thy best pleasure be it to fly to swim to dive into the fire to ride on the curled clouds to thy strong bidding task ariel and all his quality hast thou spirit performed to point the tempest that i bade thee to every article i boarded the king's ship now on the beak now in the waist the deck in every cabin i flamed amazement 
Some time I'd divide and burn in many places. On the topmast, the yards and bowsprit would I flame distinctly, then meet and join. Jove's lightnings, the precursors of the dreadful thunderclaps, more momentary and sight outrunning, were not. The fire and cracks of sulphurous roaring the most mighty Neptune seemed to besiege, and make his bold waves tremble, yea, his dread trident shake. My brave spirit, who was so firm, so constant, that this coil would not infect his reason? Not a soul but felt a fever of the mad, and played some tricks of desperation. All but mariners plunged in the foaming brine, and quit the vessel, then all of fire with me. The king's son Ferdinand, with hair upstaring, then like reeds, not hair, was the first man that leaped, cried, Hell is empty, and all the devils are here. Why, that's my spirit. But was this not nigh shore? Close by, my master. But are they, Ariel, safe? Not a hair perished, on their sustaining garments not a blemish, but fresher than before. And as thou bad'st me, in troops I have dispersed them about the isle. The king's son have I landed by himself, whom I left cooling of the air with sighs in an odd angle of the isle, and sitting his arms in this sad knot. Of the king's ship, the mariners, say how thou hast disposed, and all the rest of the fleet. Safely in harbour is the king's ship. In the deep nook, where once thou called to me up at midnight to fetch dew from the still-vexed Bermoofs, there she's hid. The mariners all under hatches stowed, who, with a charm joined to their suffered labour, I have left asleep. And for the rest of the fleet, which I dispersed, they all have met again, and are upon the Mediterranean float, bound sadly home for Naples, supposing that they saw the king's ship wrecked, and his great person perish. Ariel, thy charge exactly is performed, but there's more work. What is the time of the day? Past the mid-season. At least two glasses. The time twixt six and now must by us both be spent most preciously. Is there more toil? Since thou dost give me pains, let me remember thee what thou hast promised, which is not yet performed me. How now, moody? What is it thou canst demand? My liberty. Before the time be out? No more. I prithee, remember I have done thee worthy service, told thee no lies, made thee no mistakings, served without or grudge or grumblings. Thou didst promise to bait me a full year. Dost thou forget from what a torment I did free thee? No. Thou dost, and thinkest it much to tread the ooze of the salt deep, to run upon the sharp wind of the north, to do me business in the veins of the earth when it is baked with frost. I do not, sir. Thou liest, malignant thing, hast thou forgot the foul witch Sycorax, who with age and envy was grown into a hoop? Hast thou forgot her? No, sir. Thou hast. Where was she born? Speak, tell me. Sir, in Argier. Oh, was she so? I must once in a month recount what thou hast been which thou forgettest. This damned witch Sycorax, from mischiefs manifold and sorceries terrible to enter human hearing, from Argier, thou knowest, was banished. For one thing she did, they would not take her life. Is not this true? Ay, sir. This blue-eyed hag was hither brought with child, and here was left by the sailors. Thou, my slave, as thou reportest thyself, wast then her servant, and, for thou wast a spirit too delicate to act her earthy and abhorred commands, refusing her grand hests, she did confine thee by help of her more potent ministers, and in her most unmitigable rage, into a cloven pine, within which rift imprisoned thou didst painfully remain a dozen years, within which space she died, and left thee there, where thou didst vent thy groans as fast as mill-wheels strike. Then was this island, save for the sun that she did litter here, a freckled whelp hag-born, not honoured with a human shape. Yes, Caliban, her son. Dull thing, I say so. He, that Caliban, whom now I keep in service. Thou best knowest what torment I did find thee in. Thy groans did make wolves howl and penetrate the breasts of ever angry bears. It was a torment to lay upon the damned, which Sycorax could not again undo. It was mine art when I arrived and heard thee that made gape the pine and let thee out. I thank thee, master. If thou more murmurest, I will rend an oak and peg thee in his knotty entrails till thou hast howled away twelve winters. Pardon, master. I will be correspondent to command and do my spiriting gently. 
do so, and after two days I will discharge thee. That's my noble master. What shall I do? Say what? What shall I do? Go make thyself like a nymph of the sea. Be subject to no sight but thine and mine, invisible to every eyeball else. Go take this shape, and hither come in it. Go, hence, with diligence. Exit Ariel. Awake, dear heart, awake. Thou hast slept well. Awake. Oh, the strangeness of your story put heaviness in me. Shake it off. Come on. We'll visit Caliban, my slave, who never yields us kind answer. Mm, tis a villain, sir, I do not love to look on. But as tis, we cannot miss him. He does make our fire, fetch in our wood, and serves in offices that profit us. What ho! Slave! Caliban! Thou earth, thou! Speak! Caliban within. There's wood enough within! Come forth, I say. There's other business for thee. Come, thou tortoise, when? Re-enter Ariel. Fine apparition. My quaint Ariel, hearken thine ear. My lord, it shall be done. Exit. Thou poisonous slave, got by the devil himself upon thy wicked dam, come forth. Enter Caliban. As wicked Jew, as e'er my mother brushed with raven's feather from unwholesome fed, drop on ye both. A south-west blow on ye. A bliss of you all o'er. For this, be sure to-night thou shalt have cramps, side stitches that shall pen thy breath up, urchins shall for that vast of night that they may work all exercise on thee, thou shalt be pinched as thick as honeycomb, each pinch more stinging than bees that made em. I must eat my dinner. This island's mine by Sycorax, my mother, which thou takest from me. When thou camest first, thou strokest me, and madest much of me, wouldst give me waters with berries in't, and teach me how to name the bigger light, and how the less that burn by day and night. And then I loved thee, and showed thee all the qualities at Thyle, the fresh springs, brine pits, barren place, and fertile. Cursed be that I did so. All the charms of Sycorax, toads, beetles, bats, light on you. For I am all the subjects that you have, which first was mine own king. And here you sty me in this hard rock, whilst you do keep me from the rest at Thyland. Thou most lying slave, whom stripes may move not kindness, I have used thee, filth as thou art, with human care and lodged thee in mine own cell, till thou didst seek to violate the honour of my child. Oh, ho! Oh, ho! Would it had been done! Thou didst prevent me! I had peopled else this isle with Caliban's! Abhorred slave, which any print of goodness wilt not take, be incapable of all ill. I pitied thee, took pains to make thee speak, taught thee each hour one thing or other, when thou didst not, savage, know thine own meaning, but wouldst gabble like a thing most brutish, I endowed thy purposes with words that made them known. But thy vile race, though thou didst learn, had that in it which good natures could not abide to be with. Therefore wast thou deservedly confined into this rock, who hadst deserved more than a prison. Uh, you taught me language. And my profit on tis I know how to curse. The red plague rid you for learning me your language. Hagseed hence. Fetch us in fuel, and be quick, thou art best, to answer other business. Shruggest thou malice? If thou neglectest or dost unwillingly what I command, I'll rack thee with old cramps, fill all thy bones with aches, make thee roar, that beasts shall tremble at thy din. No oh, prayer thee. Aside. I must obey. His art is of such power it will control my dam's god set a boss and make a vassal of him. So, slave, hence. Exit Caliban. Re-enter Ariel, invisible, playing and singing. Ferdinand following. Ariel's song. Come unto these yellow sands, and then take hands. Curtsied when you have, and kissed the wild waves whist. Foot it featly here and there, and sweet sprites the burthen bear. Hark, hark, bow wow, the watchdogs bark. Bow wow. Hark, hark, I hear the strain of strutting Chanticleer cry cock-a-diddle-dow. 
Where should this music be? In the air or the earth? It sounds no more. And sure it waits upon some god of the island. Sitting on a bank, weeping again the king my father's wreck, this music crept by me upon the waters, allaying both their fury and my passion with its sweet air. Thence I have followed it, or it hath drawn me, rather. But tis gone. No, it begins again. Ariel sings. Full fathom five thy father lies, of his bones are coral made. Those are pearls that were his eyes. Nothing of him that doth fade, but doth suffer a sea-change into something rich and strange. Sea-nymphs hourly ring his knell. Ding-dong! Hark! Now I hear them. Ding-dong bell! The ditty does remember my drowned father. This is no mortal business, nor no sound that the earth owes. I hear it now above me. The fringed curtains of thine eye advance, and say what thou seest yond. What is't? A spirit? Lord, how it looks about! Believe me, sir, it carries a brave form. But tis a spirit. No wench, it eats and sleeps, and hath such senses as we have such. This gallant which thou seest was in the wreck, and, but he's something stained with grief, that's beauty's canker, thou mightst call him a goodly person. He hath lost his fellows, and strays about to find them. I might call him a thing divine, for nothing natural I ever saw so noble. Aside. It goes on, I see, as my soul prompts it. Spirit, fine spirit, I'll free thee within two days for this. Most sure the goddess on whom these heirs attend. Vouchsafe my prayer may know if you remain upon this island, and that you will some good instruction give how I may bear me here. My prime request, which I do last pronounce, is, Oh, you wonder, if you be maid or no? No wonder, sir, but certainly a maid. My language? Heavens! I am the best of them that speak this speech, were I but where tis spoken. How, the best? What wert thou if the king of Naples heard thee? A single thing, as I am now, that wonders to hear thee speak of Naples. He does hear me, and that he does I weep. Myself am Naples, who with mine eyes never since at ebb beheld the king my father wrecked. Alack, for mercy! Yes, faith, and all his lords, the Duke of Milan and his son being twain. Aside, the Duke of Milan and his more braver daughter could control thee if now twere fit to do it. At the first sight they have changed eyes. Delicate Ariel, I'll set thee free for this. To Ferdinand. A word, good sir. I fear you have done yourself some wrong. A word. Why speaks my father so ungently? This is the third man that e'er I saw, the first that e'er I sighed for. Oh, pity move my father to be inclined my way. Oh, if a virgin and your affection not gone forth, I'll make you the queen of Naples. Soft, sir, one word more. Aside. They are both in either's powers, but this swift business I must uneasy make, lest too light winning make the prize light. To Ferdinand. One word more. I charge thee that thou attend me. Thou dost here usurp the name thou owest not, and hast put thyself upon this island as a spy, to win it from me, the lord on it. No, as I am a man. There's nothing ill can dwell in such a temple. If the ill spirit have so fair a house, good things will strive to dwell within it. Follow me. Speak not you for him, he's a traitor. Come, I'll manacle thy neck and feet together. Sea-water shalt thou drink. Thy food shall be the fresh brook mussels, withered roots, and husks wherein the acorn cradled. Follow. I will resist such entertainment till mine enemy has more power. Draws, and is charmed from moving. Oh, dear father, make not too rash a trial of him, for he's gentle and not fearful. What, I say, my foot, my tutor? Put thy sword up, traitor, who makest a show but darest not strike. Thy conscience is so possessed with guilt. 
come from thy ward for i can here disarm thee with this stick and make thy weapon drop beseech you father hence hang not on my garments sir have pity i'll be his surety silence one word more shall make me chide thee if not hate thee what an advocate for an impostor hush thou thinkest there is no more such shapes as he having seen but him and caliban foolish wench to the most of men this is a caliban and they to him are angels my affections are then most humble i have no ambition to see a goodlier man come on obey thy nerves are in their infancy again and have no vigour in them so they are my spirits as in a dream are all bound up my father's loss the weakness which i feel the wreck of all my friends nor this man's threats to whom i am subdued are but light to me might i but through my prison once a day behold this maid all corners else of the earth let liberty make use of space enough have i in such a prison aside it works to ferdinand come on aside thou hast done well fine ariel to ferdinand follow me to ariel hark what thou else shalt do me be of comfort my father's of a better nature sir than he appears by speech this is unwonted which now came from him thou shalt be as free as mountain winds but then exactly do all points of my command to the syllable come follow speak not act two scene one another part of the island enter alonzo sebastian antonio gonzalo adrian francisco and others beseech you sir be merry you have cause so have we all of joy for our escape is much beyond our loss our hint of woe is common every day some sailor's wife the masters of some merchant and the merchant have just our theme of woe but for the miracle i mean our preservation few in millions can speak like us then wisely good sir weigh our sorrow with our comfort prithee peace he receives comfort like cold porridge the visitor will not give him or so look he's winding up the watch of his wit by and by it will strike sir one tell when every grief is entertained that's offered comes to the entertainer a dollar dolor comes to him indeed you have spoken truer than you purposed you have taken it wiselier than i meant you should therefore my lord fie what a spendthrift is he of his tongue i prithee spare well i have done but yet he will be talking which of he or adrian for a good wager first begins to crawl the old cock the cockerel done the wager a laughter a match though this island seem to be desert ha 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 so you're paid uninhabitable and almost inaccessible yet yet he could not mist it must needs be of subtle tender and delicate temperance temperance was a delicate wench ay and a subtle as he most learnedly delivered the air breathes upon us here most sweetly as if it had lungs and rotten ones or as twere perfumed by a fen here is everything advantageous to life true save means to live of that there's none or little how lush and lusty the grass looks how green the ground indeed is tawny with an eye of green in it he misses not much no he doth but mistake the truth totally but the rarity of it is which is indeed almost beyond credit as many vouched rarities are that our garments being as they were drenched in the sea hold notwithstanding their freshness and glosses being rather new dyed than stained with salt water if but one of his pockets could speak would it not say he lies ay your very falsy pocket up his report methinks our garments are now as fresh as when we put them on first in Afric, at the marriage of the king's fair daughter clarabel to the king of tunis twas a sweet marriage and we prosper well in our return tunis was never graced before with such a paragon to their queen not since widow dido's time widow a pox o that how came that widow in widow dido what if he had said widower enos too good lord how you take it widow dido say you you make me study of that she was of carthage not of tunis 
This Tunis, sir, was Carthage. Carthage? I assure you, Carthage. His word is more than a miraculous harp. He hath raised the wall and houses, too. What impossible matter will he make easy next? I think he will carry this island home in his pocket, and give it his son for an apple. And, sowing the kernels of it in the sea, bring forth more islands. Die. Why, in good time. Sir, we were talking that our garments seem now as fresh as when we were at Tunis at the marriage of your daughter, who is now queen. And the rarest that e'er came there. Bait, I beseech you, widow Dido. Oh, widow Dido. Ay, widow Dido. Is not, sir, my doublet as fresh as the first day I wore it? I mean, in a sort. That sort was well fished for. When I wore it at your daughter's marriage. You cram these words into mine ears against the stomach of my sense. Would that I had never married my daughter there, for coming thence my son is lost, and in my rate she too. Who is so far from Italy removed, I ne'er again shall see her. O oh, thou mine heir of Naples and of Milan, what strange fish hath made his meal on thee? Sir, he may live. I saw him beat the surges under him, and ride upon their backs he trod the water whose enmity he flung aside and breasted the surge most swoln that met him his bold head above the contentious waves he kept and oared himself with his good arms in lusty stroke to the shore that o'er his wave-worn basis bowed as stooping to relieve him i not doubt he came alive to land no no he's gone sir you may thank yourself for this great loss that would not bless our Europe with your daughter, but rather lose her to an African, where she at least is banished from your eye, who hath cause to wet the grief on it. Prithee, peace! You were kneeled to and importuned otherwise by all of us, and the fair soul herself, weighed between loathness and obedience, at which end of the beam should bow, we have lost your son. I fear for ever Milan and Naples have more widows in them of this business-making than we bring men to comfort them. The fault's your own. So is the dearest of the loss. My lord Sebastian, the truth you speak doth lack some gentleness, and time to speak it in. You rub the sore when you should bring the plaster. Very well. And most originally. It is foul weather in us all, good sir, when you are cloudy. Foul weather? Very foul. Had I plantation of this isle, my lord? He'd sow it with nettle seed, or ducks, or mallows. And were the king on it, what would I do? Escape being drunk for want of wine. In the commonwealth I would, by contraries, execute all things, for no kind of traffic would I admit. No name of magistrate, letters should not be known, riches, poverty, and use of service, none. Contract, succession, born, bound of land, tilth, vineyard, none. No use of metal, corn, or wine, or oil, no occupation, all men, idle, all, and women too, but innocent and pure, no sovereignty. Yet he will be king on it, the latter end of his commonwealth forgets the beginning. All things in common nature should produce without sweat or endeavour, treason, felony, sword, pike, knife, gun, or need of any engine would I not have, but nature should bring forth of its own kind all foison, all abundance, to feed my innocent people. No marrying among his subjects. None, man. All idle, whores and knaves. I would with such perfection govern, sir, to excel the golden age. Save his majesty. Long live Gonzalo. And do you mark me, sir? Prithee no more, thou dost talk nothing to me. I do well believe your highness, and did it to minister occasion to these gentlemen, who are of such sensible and nimble lungs that they always used to laugh at nothing. Twas you we laughed at. Who, in this kind of merry fooling, am nothing to you. So you may continue and laugh at nothing still. What a blow was there given. And it had not fallen flat long. You are gentlemen of brave metal. You would lift the moon out of her sphere, if she would continue in it five weeks without changing. Enter Ariel, invisible, playing solemn music. We would so, and then go a bat fouling. Nay, good my lord, be not angry. No, I warrant you, I will not adventure my discretion so weakly. Will you laugh me asleep? For I am very heavy. Go sleep, and hear us. All sleep, except Alonso, Sebastian, and Antonio. What? All so soon asleep? 
I wish mine eyes would, with themselves, shut up my thoughts. I find they are inclined to do so. Please you, sir, do not omit the heavy offer of it. It seldom visits sorrow. When it doth, it is a comforter. We too, my lord, will guard your person while you take your rest, and watch your safety. Thank you, wondrous heavy. Alonzo sleeps. Exit Ariel. What a strange drowsiness possesses them. It is the quality of the climate. Why did it not then our eyelids sink? I find not myself disposed to sleep. Nor I. My spirits are nimble. They fell together all as by consent. They dropped as by a thunderstroke. What might, worthy Sebastian? Oh, what might? No more. And yet methinks I see it in thy face. What thou shouldst be. The occasion speaks thee. And my strong imagination sees a crown dropping upon thy head. What, are thou waking? Do you not hear me speak? I do, and surely it is a sleepy language, and thou speaks out of thy sleep. What is it thou didst say? This is a strange repose to be asleep, with eyes wide open, standing, speaking, moving, and yet so fast asleep. Noble Sebastian, thou lettst thy fortune sleep, die rather, winkst whilst thou art waking. Thou dost snore distinctly, there's meaning in thy snores. I am more serious than my custom. You must be so too, if heed me, which to do trebles thee o'er. Well, I am standing water. I'll teach you how to flow. Do so, to ebb hereditary sloth instructs me. Oh, if you but knew how you the purpose cherish whilst thus you mock it, how in stripping it you more invest it, ebbing men indeed most often do so near the bottom run, by their own fear or sloth. Prithee, say on, the setting of thine eye and cheek proclaim a matter from thee, and a birth indeed which throws thee much to yield. Thus, sir, although this lord of weak remembrance, this, who shall be of as little memory when he is earthed, hath here almost persuaded, for he is a spirit of persuasion, only professes to persuade, the king, his sons alive, "'Tis as impossible that he's undrowned, as he that sleeps here swims. "'I have no hope that he's undrowned. "'Oh, out of that no hope, what great hope have you? "'No hope that way is another way so high a hope "'that even ambition cannot pierce a wink beyond, but doubt discovery there. "'Will you grant with me that Ferdinand is drowned?' "'He's gone. "'Then tell me, who's the next heir of Naples?' Claribel. She that is queen of Tunis, she that dwells ten leagues beyond man's life, she that from Naples can have no note, unless the sun were post, the man of the moon's too slow, till new-born chins be rough and razorable, she that from whom we all were sea swallowed, though some cast again, and by that destiny to perform an act whereof what's past is prologue, what to come, in yours and my discharge. What stuff is this? How say you? "'Tis true, my brother's daughter's queen of Tunis, so she is heir of Naples. Twixt its regions there is some space. A space whose every cubit seems to cry out, How shall that Clarabel measure us back to Naples? Keep in Tunis, and let Sebastian wake. Say, this were death that now hath seized them. Why, they were no worse than now they are. There be that can rule Naples as well as he that sleeps. Lords that can prate as amply and unnecessarily as this Gonzalo, I myself could make a chuff of as deep chat. Oh, that you bore the mind that I do! What a sleep were this for your advancement! Do you understand me? Mm, methinks I do. And how does your content tender your own good fortune? I remember you did supplant your brother Prospero. True. And look how well my garments sit upon me. Much feeter than before. My brother's servants were then my fellows. Now they are my men. But for your conscience. Aye, sir, where lies that? If twere a kibe, twould put me to my slipper. But I feel not this deity in my bosom. Twenty consciences that stand twixt me and Milan, candid be they, and melt ere they molest. Here lies your brother. No better than the earth he lies upon, if he were that which now he's like, that's dead. Whom I, with this obedient steel, three inches of it, can lay to bed for ever. Whilst you, doing thus, to the perpetual wink for I might put this ancient morsel, this Sir Prudence, who should not upbraid our course. 
For all the rest, they'll take suggestion as a cat laps milk. They'll tell the clock to any business that we say befits the hour. Thy tastier friend shall be my precedent. As thou gotst me long, I'll come by Naples. Draw thy sword. One stroke shall free thee from the tribute which thou payest. And I, the king, shall love thee. Draw together. And when I rear my hand, do you the like to fall it on Gonzalo. Ho, oh, but one word. They talk apart. Re-enter Ariel, invisible. My master through his art foresees the danger that you, his friend, are in, and sends me forth, for else his project dies, to keep them living. Sings in Gonzalo's ear. While you here do snoring lie, open-eyed conspiracy his time doth take. If of life you keep a care, shake off slumber and beware. Awake, awake! Then let us both be sudden. Now, good angels, preserve the king! They wake. Why, how now? Ho, oh, awake! Why are you drawn? Wherefore this ghastly looking? What's the matter? Whilst well, we stood here securing your repose, even now we heard a hollow burst of bellowing, like bulls or rather lions. Did not wake you? It struck mine ear most terribly. I heard nothing. Oh, t'was a din to fright a monster's ear, to make an earthquake. Sure it was the roar of a whole herd of lions. Heard you this, Gonzalo? Upon mine honour, sir, I heard a humming, and that a strange one, too, which did awake me. I shaked you, sir, and cried, as my eyes opened, I saw their weapons drawn. There is a noise, that's verily. Tis best we stand upon our guard, or that we quit this place. Let's draw our weapons. Lead off this ground, and let's make further search for my poor son. Heavens keep him from these beasts, for he is sure in the island. Lead away. Prospero, my lord, shall know what I have done. So, king... Go safely on to seek thy son. Excellent. Scene two. Another part of the island. Enter Caliban with a burden of wood. A noise of thunder heard. All the infections that the sun sucks up from bogs, fence, flats on prosper fall, and making by inch meal a disease. His spirits hear me, and yet I needs must curse. But they'll no pinch, fright me with urchin shows, pitch me i' the mire, nor lead me like a firebrand in the dark out of my way, unless he bid em. But for every trifle are they set upon me, sometime like apes that mow and chatter at me, and after bite me, then like hedgehogs, which lie tumbling in my barefoot way, and mount their pricks at my footfall. Sometime am I all wound with adders, who with cloven tongues do hiss me into madness. Enter Trinculo. Law now, law! Here comes the spirit of his, and to torment me for bringing wood in slowly. I'll fall flat. Perchance he will not mind me. He has neither bush nor shrub to bear off any weather at all, and another storm brewing. I hear it sing in the wind, yon same black cloud, yon huge one. Looks like a foul bombard that would shed his liquor. If it should thunder as it did before, I know not where to hide my head. Yon same cloud cannot choose befall by pale fools. What have we here? A man or a fish? Dead or alive? A fish. <laughs> he smells like a fish. A very ancient and fish-like smell. A kind of not of the newest poor John. A strange fish. Were I in England now, as once I was, and had but this fish painted, not a holiday fool there but would give a piece of silver. There would this monster make a man. Any strange beast there makes a man. When they will not give a Dwight to relieve a lame beggar, they will lay out ten to see a dead Indian. Legged like a man, and his fins like arms, warm on my troth. I do now let loose my opinion, hold it no longer. This is no fish, but an islander. That hath lately suffered by a thunderbolt. Thunder. Alas, the storm has come again. My best way is to creep under his gabardine. There is no other shelter hereabout. Ah, oh, misery acquaints a man with strange bedfellows. I will hear shroud till the dregs of the storm be past. Enter Stefano, singing, a bottle in his hand. I shall no more to sea to sea. Here shall I die ashore. This is a very scurvy tune to sing at a man's funeral. Well, here's my comfort. Drinks. Sings. 
The master, the swabber, the bosun and I, the gunner and his mate, loved Mal, Meg, and Marion, and Marjorie, but none of us cared for Kate. For she had a tongue with a tang, would cry to a sailor, go hang. She loved not the savor of tar nor of pitch, yet a tailor might scratch her where e'er she did itch. Then to sea, boys, and let her go hang. This is a scurvy tune, too, but here's my comfort. Drinks. Do not torment me. Oh. What's the matter? Have we devils here? Do you put tricks upon us with savages and men of ind, huh? I have not scaped drowning to be afeard now of your four legs, for it hath been said as proper a man as ever went on four legs cannot make him give ground, and it shall be said so again, while Stefano breathes at nostrils. The spirit torments me. Oh. This is some monster of the isle with four legs, who hath got, as I take it, an ague. Where the devil should he learn our language? I will give him some relief, if it be but for that. If I can recover him and keep him tame and get to Naples with him, he's a present for any emperor that ever trod on neat's leather. Do not torment me, prithee. I'll bring my wood home faster. He's in his fit now, and does not talk after the wisest. He shall taste of my bottle. If he have never drunk wine afore, it will go near to remove his fit. If I can recover him and keep him tame, I will not take too much for him. He shall pay for him that hath him, and that soundly. Thou dost me yet but little hurt. Thou wilt anon, I know it by thy trembling. No prosper works upon thee. Come on your ways. Open your mouth. Here is that which will give language to you, cat. Open your mouth. This will shake your shaking, I can tell you, and that soundly. You cannot tell who's your friend. Open your chaps again. I should know that voice. It should be. But, but he is drowned. And these are devils. Oh, defend me. Four legs and two voices. A most delicate monster. His forward voice now is to speak well of his friend. His backward voice is to utter foul speeches and to detract. If all the wine in my bottle will recover him, I will help his ague. Come, amen. I will pour some in thy other mouth. Stefano! Doth thy other mouth call me? Mercy, mercy, this is a devil and no monster. I will leave him, I have no long spoon. Stefano, if thou beest Stefano, touch me and speak to me, for I am Trinculo, be not afeard. Thy good friend Trinculo! If thou beest Trinculo, come forth. I'll pull thee by the lesser legs. If any be Trinculo's legs, these are they. Thou art very Trinculo indeed. How earnest thou to be the siege of this moon calf? Can he vent Trinculo's? I took him to be killed with a thunderstroke. But art thou not drowned, Stefano? I hope now that art not drowned. <laughs> Is the storm overblown? I hid me under the dead moon calf's gabardine for fear of the storm. And art thou living, Stefano? Oh, Stefano, two Neapolitans escaped. Prithee, do not turn me about. My stomach is not constant. Aside. These be fine things. And if they be not sprites? That's a brave god. A bare celestial liquor. I will kneel to him. How didst thou escape? How camest thou hither? Swear by this bottle how thou camest hither. I escaped upon a butt of sack, which the sailors heaved or bored by this bottle, which I made of the bark of a tree with mine own hands since I was cast ashore. I'll swear upon that bottle to be thy true subject, for the liquor is not earthly. Here, swear then how thou escapest. Swam ashore, man, like a duck. I can swim like a duck, I'll be sworn. Here, kiss the book. Though thou canst swim like a duck, thou art made like a goose. Oh, Stefano, hast any more of this? The whole butt, man! My cellar is in a rock by the seaside where my wine is hid. How now, moon calf, how does thine ague? Hast thou not dropped from heaven? Out of the moon, I do assure thee. I was the man in the moon when time was. I, I have seen thee in her, and I do adore thee. My mistress showed me thee, and thy dog, and thy bush. Come, swear to that. Kiss the book. I will furnish it anon with new contents. Swear. By this good light, this is a very shallow monster. I have feared of him. A very weak monster. The man in the moon. 
a most poor credulous monster well drawn monster in good sooth i'll show thee every fertile inch at thyland and i will kiss thy foot i prithee be my god by this light a most perfidious and drunken monster when god's asleep he'll rob his bottle i'll kiss thy foot i'll swear myself thy subject come on then down and swear i shall laugh myself to death at this puppy-headed monster a most scurvy monster i could find it in my heart to beat him come kiss but that the poor monster's in drink an abominable monster i'll show thee the best springs i'll pluck thee berries i'll fish for thee and get thee wood enough a plague upon the tyrant that i serve i'll bear him no more sticks but follow thee thou wondrous man a most ridiculous monster to make a wonder of a poor drunkard i prithee let me bring thee where crabs grow and i with my long nails will dig thee pig nuts show thee a jay's nest and instruct thee how to snare the nimble marmoset i'll bring thee to clustering filberts and sometimes i'll get thee young scammels from the rock wilt thou go with me i prithee now lead the way without any more talking trinculo the king and all our company else being drowned we will inherit here here bear my bottle fellow trinculo we'll fill him by and by again caliban sings drunkenly farewell master farewell farewell a howling monster a drunken monster no more dams i'll make for fish nor fetchin firing at requiring nor scrap trencher nor wash dish ban ban cacale ban has a new master get a new man freedom heyday heyday freedom freedom heyday freedom oh brave monster lead the way excellent end of act act three Scene one, before Prospero's cell. Enter Ferdinand, bearing a log. There be some sports are painful, and their labor delight in them sets off. Some kinds of baseness are nobly undergone, and most poor matters point to rich ends. This my mean task would be as heavy to me as odious, but the mistress which I serve quickens what's dead, and makes my labors pleasures. Oh, she is ten times more gentle than her father's crabbed, and he's composed of harshness. I must remove some thousands of these logs and pile them up upon a sore injunction. My sweet mistress weeps when she sees me work, and says such baseness had never like executor. I forget. But these sweet thoughts do refresh my labors, most busy, least when I do it. Enter Miranda and Prospero at a distance, unseen. Alas, now pray you, work not so hard. I would the lightning had burnt up those logs that you are enjoined to pile. Pray set it down and rest you. When this burns, twill weep for having wearied you. My father is hard at study. Pray now rest yourself. He's safe for these three hours. O oh, most dear mistress, the sun will set before I shall discharge what I must strive to do. If you'll sit down, I'll bear your logs the while. Pray give me that, I'll carry it to the pile. No, precious creature, I had rather crack my sinews, break my back, than you should such dishonor undergo while I sit lazy by. It would become me as well as it does you, and I should do it with much more ease, for my good will is to it, and yours it is against. Poor worm, thou art infected. This visitation shows it. You look wearily. No, noble mistress, tis fresh morning with me when you are by at night. I do beseech you, chiefly that I might set it in my prayers. What is your name? Miranda. Oh, my father, I have broke your hest to say so. Admired Miranda. Indeed the top of admiration, worth what's dearest to the world. Full many a lady I have eyed with best regard, and many a time the harmony of their tongues hath into bondage brought my too diligent ear. For several virtues have I liked several women. 
never any was so full soul but some defect in her did quarrel with the noblest grace she owed and put it to the foil but you o oh, you so perfect and so peerless are created of every creature's best i do not know one of my sex no woman's face remember save from my glass mine own nor have i seen more that i may call men than you good friend and my dear father how features are abroad i am skilless of but by my modesty the jewel in my dower i would not wish any companion in the world but you nor can imagination form a shape besides yourself to like of but i prattle something too wildly and my father's precepts i therein do forget i am in my condition a prince miranda i do think a king i would not so and would no more endure this wooden slavery than to offer the flesh-fly blow my mouth hear my soul speak the very instant that i saw you did my heart fly to your service there resides to make me slave to it and for your sake am i this patient logman do you love me o heaven o earth bear witness to this sound and crown what i profess with kind event if i speak true if hollowly invert what best is boded me to mischief i beyond all limit what else in the world do love prize honour you i am a fool to weep at what i am glad of fair encounter of two most rare affections heaven's rain grace on that which breeds between them wherefore weep you at mine unworthiness that dare not offer what i desire to give and much less take what i shall die to want but this is trifling and all the more it seeks to hide itself the bigger bulk it shows hence bashful cunning and prompt me plain and holy innocence i am your wife if you will marry me if not i'll die your maid to be your fellow you may deny me but i'll be your servant whether you will or no my mistress dearest and i thus humble ever my husband then ay with a heart as willing as bondage e'er of freedom here's my hand and mine with my heart and and now farewell till half an hour hence a thousand thousand exuant ferdinand and miranda severally so glad of this as they i cannot be who are surprised withal but my rejoicing at nothing can be more i'll to my book for yet ere supper-time must i perform much business appertaining exit scene two another part of the island enter caliban stefano and trinculo tell not me when the butt is out we will drink water not a drop before therefore bear up and boredom servant monster drink to me uh, servant monster the folly of this island <laughs> they say there's but five upon this isle we are three of them if the other two be brain like us the state totters drink servant monster when i bid thee thy eyes are almost set in thy head where should they be set else he were a brave monster indeed if they were set in his tail my man monster hath drowned his tongue in sack for my part the sea cannot drown me i swam ere i could recover the shore five and thirty leagues off and on by this light thou shalt be my lieutenant monster or my standard your lieutenant if you list he's no standard we'll not run monsieur monster nor go neither but you'll lie like dogs and yet say nothing neither mooncalf speak once in thy life if thou beest a good mooncalf how does thy honour let me lick thy shoe i'll not serve him he is not valiant thou liest most ignorant monster i am in case to justle a constable why thou debauched fish thou was there ever a man a coward that hath drunk so much sack as i to-day will thou tell a monstrous lie being but half a fish and half a monster law how he mocks me wilt thou let him my lord lord quoth he that a monster should be such a natural law law again bite him to death i prithee trinculo keep a good tongue in your head if you prove a mutineer the next tree 
The poor monster is my subject, and he shall not suffer indignity. I thank my noble lord. Wilt thou be pleased to hearken once again to the suit I made to thee? Mary, will I. Kneel and repeat it. I will stand, and so shall Trinculo. Enter Ariel, invisible. As I told thee before, I am subject to a tyrant, a sorcerer, that by his cunning hath cheated me of the island. Thou liest. Thou liest, thou jesting monkey, thou. I would my valiant master would destroy thee. I do not lie. Trinculo, if you trouble him any more in's tale by this hand, I will supplant some of your teeth. Why, I said nothing. Mum, then, and no more. Proceed. I say, by sorcery he got this isle. From me he got it. If thy greatness will revenge it on him, for I know thou darest, but this thing dare not. That's most certain. Thou shalt be lord of it, and I'll serve thee. How now shall this be compassed? Canst thou bring me to the party? Yea, yea, my lord. I'll yield him thee asleep, where thou mayst knock a nail into his head. Thou liest, thou canst not. What a pardon is this? Thou scurvy patch! I do beseech thy greatness, give him blows, and take his bottle from him. When that's gone, he shall drink naught but brine, for I'll not show him where the quick freshes are. Trinculo, run into no further danger. Interrupt the monster one word further, and by this hand I'll turn my mercy out of doors and make a stock fish of thee. Why? What did I... I did nothing. I'll go farther off. Didst thou not say he lied? Thou liest. Do I so? Take thou that. Beats him. As you like this, give me the lie another time. Oh, uh, I did not give the lie. Out of your wits and hearing too. A pox of your bottle, this can sack and drinking do. A moraine on your monster, and the devil take your fingers. Ha <laughs> ha ha! Now forward with your tail. Prithee, stand farther off. Beat him enough. After a little time, I'll beat him too. Stand farther. Come, proceed. Why, as I told thee, tis a custom with him it afternoon to sleep. There thou mayst brain him, having first seized his books, or with a log batter his skull, or paunch him with a stake, or cut his weasand with thy knife. Remember first to possess his books, for without them he's but a sot as I am, nor hath not one spirit to command. They all do hate him as rootedly as I. Burn but his books. He has brave utensils, for so he calls them, which, when he has a house, he'll deck with all. And that most deeply to consider is the beauty of his daughter. He himself calls her a non -parai. I never saw a woman, but only Sycorax my dam and she... But she as far surpasseth Sycorax, as greatest does least. Is it so brave, alas? Ay, lord, she will become thy bed, I warrant, and bring thee forth brave brood. Monster, I will kill this man. His daughter and I will be king and queen, save our graces, and Trinculo and thyself shall be viceroys. Dost thou like the plot, Trinculo? Uh, excellent. Give me thy hand. I am sorry I beat thee. But while thou livest, keep a good tongue in thy head. Within this half hour will he be asleep. Wilt thou destroy him then? Aye, on mine honour. This will I tell my master. Thou makest me merry. I am full of pleasure. Let us be jocund. Will you troll the cat you taught me but while e'er? At thy request, monster, I will do reason, any reason. Come on, Trinculo, let us sing. Sings. Floutum and scoutum and scoutum and floutum. Thought is free. That's not the tune. Ariel plays the tune on a tabor and pipe. What is this same? Shh. This is the tune of our catch, played by the picture of nobody. If thou beest a man, show thyself in thy likeness. If thou beest a devil, take it as thou list. Oh, forgive me of my sins. He that dies pays all debts. I defy thee. Mercy upon us. Art thou afeard? No, monster, not I. Be not afeard. The isle is full of noises, sounds and sweet airs that give delight and hurt not. Sometimes a 
thousand twangling instruments will hum about mine ears, and sometimes voices, that if I then had waked after long sleep, will make me sleep again. And then, in dreaming, the clouds, methought, would open, and show riches ready to drop upon me, that, when I waked, I cried to dream again. This will prove a brave kingdom to me, where I shall have my music for nothing. When Prospero is destroyed. That shall be by and by. I remember the story. The sound is going away. Let's follow it, and after do our work. Lead, monster, we'll follow. I would I could see this chaberer. He lays it on. Wilt come. Uh, I'll follow Stefano. Exit. Scene 3. Another part of the island. Enter Alonso, Sebastian, Antonio, Gonzalo, Adrian, Francisco, and others. By our lack, and I can go no further, sir. My old bones ache. Here's a maze trod indeed through forthrights and meanders. By your patience, I needs must rest me. O oh Lord, I cannot blame thee, who am myself attached with weariness to the dulling of my spirits. Sit down and rest. Even here I will put off my hope, and keep it no longer for my flatterer. He is drowned, whom thus we stray to find, and the sea mocks our frustrate search on land. Well, let him go. Aside to Sebastian. I am right glad that he's so out of hope. Do not, for one repulse, forego the purpose that you resolve to effect. Aside to Antonio. The next advantage we will take it throughly. Aside to Sebastian. Let it be to-night. For now they are oppressed with travel, they will not, nor cannot, use such vigilance as when they are fresh. Aside to Antonio. I say to-night, no more. Solemn and strange music. What harmony is this? My good friends, hark! Marvellous sweet music. Enter Prospero, above, invisible. Enter several strange shapes, bringing in a banquet. They dance about it with gentle actions of salutation, and, inviting the king, etc., to eat, they depart. Give us kind keepers, heavens! What were these? A living drollery. Now I will believe that there are unicorns that in Arabia there is one tree, the phoenix throne, one phoenix at this hour reigning there. I'll believe both. And what does else want credit? Come to me, and I'll be sworn tis true. Travellers ne'er did lie, though fools at home condemn em. If in Naples I should report this now, would they believe me? If I should say I saw such islanders, for certes these are people of the island, who, though they are of monstrous shape, yet, Note, their manners are more gentle kind than of our human generation you shall find many, nay, almost any. Aside, Honest lord, thou hast said well, for some of you there present are worse than devils. I cannot too much muse, such shape, such gesture, and such sound, expressing, although they want the use of tongue, a kind of excellent dumb discourse. Aside, Praise in departing. They vanished, strangely. No matter, since they have left their viands behind, for we have stomachs. Would please you taste of what is here? Not I. Faith, sir, you need not fear. When we were boys, who would believe that there were mountaineers dew-lapped like bulls, whose throats had hanging at them wallets of flesh, or that there were such men whose heads stood in their breasts, which now we find each putter out of five for one will bring us good warrant of? I will stand to and feed. Although my last, no matter, since I feel the best is past. Brother, my lord the duke, stand to and do as we. Thunder and lightning. Enter Ariel, like a harpy, claps his wings upon the table, and, with a quaint device, the banquet vanishes. You are three men of sin, whom destiny, that hath to instrument this lower world and what is in it, the never surfeited sea hath caused to belch up you, and on this island, where man doth not inhabit, you mongst men being most unfit to live. 
I have made you mad, and even with such like valour men hang and drown their proper selves. Alonzo, Sebastian, etc., draw their swords. You fools! I and my fellows are ministers of fate. The elements of whom your swords are tempered may as well wound the loud winds, or with bemocked-at stabs kill the still-closing waters, as diminish one dowel that's in my plume. My fellow ministers are like invulnerable. If you could hurt, your swords are now too massy for your strengths, and will not be uplifted. But remember, for that's my business to you, that you three from Milan did supplant good Prospero, exposed unto the sea which hath requited him and his innocent child, for which foul deed the powers delaying, not forgetting, have incensed the seas and shores, yea, all the creatures against your peace. Thee of thy son, Alonzo, they have bereft, and do pronounce by me lingering perdition, worse than any death can be at once, shall step by step attend you and your ways, whose wraths to guard you from, which here in this most desolate isle else falls upon your heads, is nothing but hot sorrow, and a clear life ensuing. He vanishes in thunder. Then, to soft music, enter the shapes again, and dance, with mocks and mouths, and carrying out the table. Bravely the figure of this harpy hast thou performed, my Ariel, a grace it had devouring. Of my instruction hast thou nothing baited in what thou hadst to say. So, with good life and observation strange, my meaner ministers their several kinds have done. My high charms work, and these mine enemies are all knit up in their distractions. They now are in my power. And in these fits I leave them while I visit young Ferdinand, whom they suppose is drowned, and his and mine loved darling. Exit above. In the name of something holy, sir, why stand you in this strange stare? Oh, it is monstrous, monstrous! Methought the billows spoke and told me of it. The winds did sing it to me, and the thunder, that deep and dreadful organ-pipe, pronounced the name of Prosper. It did base my trespass. Therefore my son in those is bedded, and I'll seek him deeper than e'er plummet sounded, and with him there lie muddied. Exit. But one fiend at a time, I'll fight their legions o'er. I'll be thy second. Exuant Sebastian and Antonio. All three of them are desperate. Their great guilt like poison given to work a great time after, now gins to bite the spirits. I do beseech you that are of suppler joints, follow them swiftly, and hinder them from what this ecstasy may now provoke. Act Four, Scene One Before Prospero's Cell Enter Prospero, Ferdinand, and Miranda. If I have too austerely punished you, your compensation makes amends, for I have given you here a third of mine own life, or that for which I live, who once again I tender to thy hand. All thy vexations were but trials of thy love, and thou hast strangely stood the test. Here, afore heaven, I ratify this my rich gift. O oh, Ferdinand, do not smile at me that I boast her off, for thou shalt find she will outstrip all praise, and make it halt behind her. I do believe it against an oracle. Then, as my gift and thine own acquisition worthily purchased, take my daughter. But if thou dost break her virgin knot before all sanctimonious ceremonies may with full and holy rite be ministered, no sweet aspersion shall the heavens let fall to make this contract grow, but barren hate, sour-eyed disdain and discord shall bestrew the union of your bed with weeds so loathly that you shall hate it both. Therefore take heed, as Hymen's lamps shall light you. As I hope for quiet days, fair issue, and long life, with such love as tis now, the murkiest den, the most opportune place, the strongest suggestion our worser genius can, shall never melt mine honour into lust, to take away the edge of that day's celebration, when I shall think, or Phoebus steeds are foundered, or night kept chained below. Fairly spoke. 
Sit, then, and talk with her. She is thine own. What, Ariel? My industrious servant, Ariel. Enter Ariel. What would, my potent master? Here I am. Thou and thy meaner fellows your last service did worthily perform, and I must use you in such another trick. Go, bring the rabble, or whom I give thee power, here to this place. Incite them to quick motion, for I must bestow upon the eyes of this young couple some vanity of mine art. It is my promise, and they expect it from me. Presently? Ay, with a twink. Before you can say come and go and breathe twice and cry so-so, each one tripping on his toe will be here with mop and mow. Do you love me, master, no? Dearly, my delicate Ariel, do not approach till thou dost hear me call. Well, I conceive. Exit Ariel. Look thou be true, do not give dalliance too much the rein. The strongest oaths are straw to the fire in the blood. Be more abstemious, or else good night your vow. I warrant you, sir. The white, cold, virgin snow upon my heart abates the ardour of my liver. Well, now come, my Ariel, bring a corollary rather than want a spirit, appear, and pertly. No tongue, all eyes, be silent. Soft music. Enter Iris. Ceres, most bounteous lady, thy rich lees of wheat, rye, barley, vetches, oats, and peas, thy turfy mountains where live nibbling sheep, and flat meads thatched with stover them to keep, thy banks with pioned and twilled brims, which spongy April at thy best betrims, to make cold nymphs chaste crowns, and thy broom groves, whose shadow the dismissed bachelor loves, being last lorn, thy pole-clipped vineyard, and thy sea-marge, sterile and rocky hard, where thou thyself dost air the queen o' the sky, whose watery arch and messenger am I, bids thee leave these, and with her sovereign grace, here on this grass-plot, in this very place, to come and sport her peacocks fly amain, approach rich Ceres, her to entertain. Enter Ceres. Hail, many-colored messenger, that ne'er dost disobey the wife of Jupiter, who with thy saffron wings upon my flowers diffusest honey-drops, refreshing showers, and with each end of thy blue bow dost crown my bosky acres and my unshrubbed down. Rich scarf to my proud earth, why hath thy queen summoned me hither to this short grass green? A contract of true love to celebrate, and some donation freely to estate on the blessed lovers. Tell me, heavenly bow, if Venus or her son as thou dost know, do now attend the queen. Since they did plot the means that dusky dis my daughter got, her and her blind boys scandaled company, I have forsworn. Of her society, be not afraid. I met her deity, cutting the clouds toward Paphos, and her son, dove drawn with her, here thought they to have done, some wanton charm upon this man and maid, whose vows are that no bed right shall be paid, till Hymen's torch be lighted. But in vain, Mars' hot minion is returned again. Her waspish-headed son has broke his arrows, swears he will shoot no more, but play with sparrows, and be a boy right out. Highest queen of state, great Juno comes, I know her by her gate. Enter Juno. How does my bounteous sister go with me to bless this twain, that they may prosperous be, and honoured in their issue? They sing. Honour, riches, marriage, blessing, long continuance and increasing, hourly joys be still upon you. Juno sings her blessings on you. Earths increase, foys in plenty, barns and garners never empty, vines and clustering branches growing, plants with goodly burthen bowing. Spring come to you at the farthest, in the very end of harvest. Scarcity and want shall shun you. Ceres' blessing so is on you. This is a most majestic vision and harmonious charmingly. May I be bold to think these spirits? Spirits, which by mine art I have from their confines called to enact my present fancies. Let me live here ever. So rare a wandered father and a wife makes this place paradise. Juno and Ceres whisper, and send Iris on employment. Sweet now, silence. Juno and Ceres whisper seriously. There's something else to do. Hush, and be mute, or else our spell is marred. You nymphs call naiads of the windering brooks, with your sedged crowns and ever harmless looks. Leave your crisp channels, and on this green land, answer your summons, Juno does command. 
Come, temperate nymphs, and help to celebrate a contract of true love. Be not too late. Enter certain nymphs. You sunburnt sicklemen of August weary, come hither from the furrow and be merry. Make holiday your rye straw hats put on, and these fresh nymphs encounter every one in country footing. Enter certain reapers, properly habited. They join with the nymphs in a graceful dance. Towards the end whereof Prospero starts suddenly and speaks. After which, to a strange, hollow, and confused noise, they heavily vanish. I had forgot that foul conspiracy of the beast Caliban and his confederates against my life. The minute of their plot is almost come. To the spirits. Well done. Avoid. No more. This is strange. Your father's in some passion that works him strongly. Never till this day saw I him touched with anger so distempered. You do look, my son, in a moved sort, as if you were dismayed. Be cheerful, sir. Our revels now are ended. These our actors, as I foretold you, were all spirits, and are melted into air, into thin air. And, like the baseless fabric of this vision, the cloud-capped towers, the gorgeous palaces, the solemn temples, the great globe itself, yea, all which it inherit, shall dissolve, and like this insubstantial pageant faded, leave not a rack behind. We are such stuff as dreams are made on, and our little life is rounded with a sleep. Sir, I am vexed. Bear with my weakness. My old brain is troubled. Be not disturbed with my infirmity. If you be pleased, retire into my cell, and there repose. A turn or two I'll walk to still my beating mind. We, we wish, wish your, your peace. peace. Excellent. Come with a thought. I thank thee, Ariel. Come. Enter Ariel. Thy thoughts I cleave to. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. Ay, my commander, when I presented Ceres, I thought to have told thee of it, but I feared lest I might anger thee. Say again, where didst thou leave these varlets? I told you, sir, they were red-hot with drinking, so full of valour that they smote the air for breathing in their faces, beat the ground for kissing of their feet, yet always bending towards their project. Then I beat my table, at which like unbacked colts they pricked their ears, advanced their eyelids, lifted up their noses as they smelt music. So I charmed their ears, that calf-like, they my lowing followed through toothed briars, sharp furzes, prickling goss, and thorns, which entered their frail shins. At last I left them in the filthy mantled pool beyond your cell, there dancing up to the chins, that the foul lake or stunk their feet. This was well done, my bird. Thy shape invisible, retain thou still. The trumpery in my house, go bring it hither, for stale to catch these thieves. I go, I go. Exit Ariel. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stick, on whom my pains humanely taken, all, all lost, quite lost, and as with age his body uglier grows, so his mind cankers. I will plague them all, even to roaring. Re-enter Ariel, loaden with glistering apparel, etc. Come, hang them on this line. Prospero and Ariel remain invisible. Enter Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo, all wet. Pray you tread softly, that the blind mole may not hear a footfall. We now are near his cell. Monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than played the jack with us. Oh, monster, I do smell all horse piss, at which my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, look you. Thou wert but a lost monster. Good, my lord, give me thy favour still. Be patient, for the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore speak softly. All's hushed as midnight yet. Ah, but to lose our bottles in the pool. There is not only disgrace and dishonor in that, monster, but an infinite loss. That's more to me than my wedding. Yet this is your harmless fairy monster. 
I will fetch off my bottle, though I be o'er ears for my labour. Prithee, my king, be quiet. Seest thou here? This is the mouth of the cell. No noise and enter. Do that good mischief which may make this island thine own for ever, and I, thy Caliban, for I thy footlicker. Give me thy hand. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. O oh, King Stefano, O oh, peer, O oh, worthy Stefano, look what a wardrobe here is for thee. Let it alone, thou fool. It is but trash. Oh ho, monster, we know what belongs to a frippery. O oh, King Stefano. Put off that gown, Trinculo. By this hand I'll have that gown. Thy grace shall have it. The dropsy drown this fool. What do you mean to dote thus on such luggage? Let's alone and do the murder first. If he awake from toe to crown, he'll fill our skins with pinches, make a strange stuff. Be you quiet, monster. Mistress Line, is not this my jerkin? Now is the jerkin under the line. Now, jerkin, you are like to lose your hair and prove a bald jerkin. Do, do. We still by the line and level. Ain't like your grace. I thank thee for that jest. Here's a garment for it. Wit shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. Steel by line and level is an excellent pass of pate. There's another garment for it. <laughs> Monster, come, put some lime upon your fingers, and away with the rest. I will have none on't. We shall lose our time, and all be turned to barnacles or to apes with foreheads villainous law. Monster, lay to your fingers. Help to bear this away where my hog's head of wine is, or I'll turn you out of my kingdom. Go to, carry this. Oh, and this. I and this. A noise of hunters heard. Enter diverse spirits, in shape of dogs and hounds, and hunt them about, Prospero and Ariel setting them on. Hey, mountain, hey. Silver, there it goes, Silver. Fury, fury, there, tyrant, there, hark, hark. Oh, 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 oh. Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo are driven out. Go charge my goblins that they grind their joints with dry convulsions, shorten up their sinews with aged cramps, and more pinch-spotted make them than pard or cat a mountain. Hark! They roar! Let them be hunted soundly. At this hour lie at my mercy all mine enemies. Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have the air at freedom. For a little follow. Act Five, Scene One. Before the cell of Prospero. Enter Prospero in his magic robes, and Ariel. Now does my project gather to a head. My charms crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. How's the day? On the sixth hour, at which time, my lord, you said our work should cease. I did say so when first I raised the tempest. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and his followers? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave charge, just as you left them. All prisoners, sir, in the lime grove which weather fends your cell, they cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, and the remainder mourning over them, brimful of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly, him that you termed, sir, that good old lord Gonzalo, his tears run down his beard like winter's drops from eaves of reeds. Your charm so strongly works them, that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, sir, were I human. And mine shall. Hast thou, which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself, one of their kind, that relish all as sharply passion as they, be kindlier moved than thou art? Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason gainst my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, the sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. I'll fetch them, sir. 
Ye elves of hills, brooks, standing lakes and groves, and ye that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune, and do fly him when he comes back, you demi-puppets that by moonshine do the green sour ringlets make whereof the ewe not bites and you whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew by whose aid weak masters though ye be i have bedimmed the noontide sun called forth the mutinous winds and twixt the green sea and the azure vault set roaring war to the dread rattling thunder have I given fire, and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong-based promontory have I made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers, oped, and let em forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I here abjure, and when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for, I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Solemn Music Re-enter Ariel before, then Alonzo, with a frantic gesture, attended by Gonzalo, Sebastian and Antonio in like manner, attended by Adrian and Francisco. They all enter the circle which Prospero had made, and there stand charmed, which Prospero, observing, speaks, A solemn air, and the best comforter to an unsettled fancy, cure thy brains, now useless boiled within thy skull. There stand, for you are spell-stopped. Holy Gonzalo, honorable man, Mine eyes, even sociable to the show of thine, Fall fellowly drops. The charm dissolves apace, And as the morning steals upon the night, Melting the darkness, So their rising senses begin to chase The ignorant fumes that mantle their clearer reason. O oh, good Gonzalo, my true preserver, and a loyal sir to him thou followest, I will pay thy graces home both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonso, use me and my daughter. Thy brother was a furtherer in the act. Thou art pinched for it now, Sebastian. Flesh and blood! You, brother mine, that entertained ambition, expelled remorse and nature, who with Sebastian, whose inward pinches therefore are most strong, would here have killed your king, I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. Their understanding begins to swell, and the approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy. Not one of them that yet looks on me, or would know me. Ariel, fetch me the hat and rapier in my cell. I will discase me, and myself present as I was some time millen. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. Ariel sings, and helps to attire him. Where the bee sucks, there suck I. In a cowslip's bell I lie. There I couch when owls do cry. On the bat's back I do fly after summer merrily 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 shall i live now under the blossom that hangs on the bough why that's my dainty ariel i shall miss thee but yet thou shalt have freedom so 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 to the king's ship invisible as thou art there shalt thou find the mariners asleep under the hatches the master and the boatswain being awake enforce them to this place and presently i prithee I drink the air before me, and return or e'er your pulse twice beat. All torment, trouble, wonder, and amazement inhabits here. Some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. Behold, Sir King, the wronged Duke of Milan, Prospero. For more assurance that a living prince does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body, and to thee and thy company I bid a hearty welcome. 
whether thou beest he or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as late I have been, I not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind amends, with which I fear a madness held me. This must crave, and if this be at all, a most strange story. Thy duke to my resign, and do entreat thou pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prospero be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honour cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends, all. Aside to Sebastian and Antonio. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded, I here could pluck his highness frown upon you, and justify you traitors. At this time I will tell no tales. Aside. The devil speaks in him. No. For you, most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth, I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them, and require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou beest Prospero, give us particulars of thy preservation, how thou hast met us here, who three hours since were wrecked upon this shore, where I have lost how sharp the point of this remembrance is, my dear son Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss, and patience says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her help of whose soft grace for the like loss I have her sovereign aid, and rest myself content. You the like loss! As great to me as late, and supportable to make the dear loss, have I means much weaker than you may call to comfort you, for I have lost my daughter. A daughter? Oh, heavens, that they were living both in Naples! The king and queen there! That they were, I wish myself, were muddied in that oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. I perceive these lords at this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason, and scarce think their eyes do offices of truth, their words are natural breath. But howsoe'er you have been jostled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospero, and that very duke which was thrust forth of Milan, who most strangely upon this shore where you were wrecked, was landed to be the lord on it. No more yet of this, for tis a chronicle of day by day, not a relation for a breakfast, nor befitting this first meeting. Welcome, sir, this sells my court. Here have I few attendants, and subjects none abroad. Pray you, look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with as good a thing. At least bring forth a wonder to content ye as much as me, my dukedom. Here Prospero discovers Ferdinand and Miranda playing at chess. Sweet lord, you play me false. No, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle, and I would call it fair play. If this prove a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Kneels. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. Arise and say how thou camest here. Oh, wonder! How many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is! Oh, brave new world that has such people in it! Tis new to thee. What is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Your eldest acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that hath severed us, and brought us thus together? Sir, she is mortal. But by immortal providence she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous Duke of Milan, of whom so often I have heard renown, but never saw before, of whom I have received a second life, and second father this lady makes him to me. I am hers. 
But oh, how oddly will it sound that I must ask my child forgiveness. There, sir, stop. Let us not burthen our remembrances with a heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, or should have spoken ere this. Look down, you gods, and on this couple drop a blessed crown, for it is you that have chalked forth the way which brought us hither. I say amen, Gonzalo. Was Milan thrust from Milan that his issue should become kings of Naples? Oh, rejoice beyond a common joy, and set it down with gold on lasting pillars. In one voyage did Clarabel, her husband, find at Tunis, and Ferdinand, her brother, found a wife where he himself was lost, Prospero his dukedom in a poor isle, and all of us ourselves when no man was his own. To Ferdinand and Miranda Give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Re-enter Ariel, with the master and the boatswain, amazedly following. Oh, look, sir, look, sir. Here is more of us. I prophesied, if a gallows were on land, this fellow could not drown. Now blasphemy, that swearest grace or board, not an oath on shore. Hast thou no mouth by land? What is the news? The best news is that we have safely found our king and company, the next our ship, which, but three glasses since, we gave out split, is tight and yar and bravely rigged, as when we first put out to sea. Aside to Prospero. Sir, all this service have I done since I went. Aside to Ariel. My tricksy spirit. These are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. Say, how came you hither? If I did think, sir, I were well awake. I'd all strive to tell you. We were dead of sleep, and, how we know not, all clapped under hatches. Where, but even now, with strange and several noises of roaring, shrieking, howling, jingling chains, and more diversity of sounds, all horrible, we were awaked, straightway, at liberty, were we, in all her trim, freshly beheld our royal, good, and gallant ship, our master, capering to eye her, on a trice, so please you, even in a dream, were we divided from them, and were brought moping hither. Aside to Prospero. Wast well done? Aside to Ariel. Bravely, my diligence, thou shalt be free. This is as strange a maze as e'er men trod, and there is in this business more than nature was ever conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not infest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. At picked leisure, which shall be shortly, single I'll resolve you, which to you shall seem probable, of every these happened accidents. Till when, be cheerful, and think of each thing well. Aside to Ariel, come hither, spirit, set Caliban and his companions free, untie the spell. How fares, my gracious sir, there are yet missing of your company some few odd lads that you remember not. Re-enter Ariel, driving in Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo, in their stolen apparel. Every man shift for all the rest, and let no man take care for himself, for all is but fortune. Coraggio, bully monster, coraggio! If these be true spies with which I wear my head, here's a goodly sight. Oh, Setter Boss, these be brave spirits indeed. How fine my master is! I am afraid he will chastise me. Ha ha! What things are these, my lord Antonio? Will money buy em? Very like. One of them is a plain fish, and no doubt marketable. Mark but the badges of these men, my lords, then say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so strong that could control the moon, make flows and ebbs, and deal in her command without her power. These three have robbed me, and this demi-devil, for he's a bastard one, had plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own, this thing of darkness I acknowledge mine. Oh, I shall be pitched to death. Is not this Stefano, my drunken butler? He is drunk now. Where had he wine? And Trinculo is reeling ripe. Where should they find this grand liquor that hath gilded them? 
How camest thou in this pickle? I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last. I fear me will never out of my bones. I shall not fear fly-blowing. Why, how now, Stefano? Oh, touch me not! I am not Stefano, but a cramp. You'd be king of the isle, sirrah. I should have been a sore one then. This is a strange thing as e'er I looked on. Pointing to Caliban. He is as disproportioned in his manners as in his shape. Go, sirrah, to my cell. Take with you your companions. As you look to have my pardon, trim it handsomely. Aye, that I will. And I'll be wise hereafter, and seek for grace. What a thrice double arse was I to take this drunkard for a god, and worship this dull fool. Go to, away. Hence, and bestow your luggage where you found it. Or stole it, rather. Exuent. Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night, which part of it I'll waste with such discourse as I not doubt shall make it go quick away, the story of my life, and the particular accidents gone by since I came to this isle, and in the morn I'll bring you to your ship and so to Naples, where I have hope to see the nuptial of these our dear beloved Solemnized, and thence retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ear strangely. I'll deliver all, and promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sails so expeditious that shall catch your royal fleet far off. Aside to Ariel, my Ariel chick, that is thy charge. Then to the elements be free, and fare thou well. Please you, draw near. End of Act Five. Epilogue. Spoken by Prospero. Now my charms are all o'erthrown, and what strength I have's mine own, which is most faint. Now tis true I must be here confined by you or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got and pardoned the deceiver, dwell on this bare island by your spell, but release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours my sails must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardoned be, let your indulgence set me free. End of epilogue.